What's up, MexicanDevelopment.com? This is me, Ron Harris. I'm gonna take you through a leg workout of mine. I'm gonna stay up front. This is not how I built my legs necessarily because I'm 50 years old now. I've been training for 36 years. Coming up on my 37th year of training. So what I do now is different. Uh, it's not that I'm just trying to maintain, but you know, as you get older, there is wear and tear on the joints. Your lower back might not be as strong as it used to be. So you make adjustments. I've made a lot of adjustments and I've been able to maintain all my leg size at age 50, which most guys my age, they've lost a significant amount of their leg mass. Um, and I've been able to do it without squatting heavy. I haven't squatted heavy probably in somewhere between five and 10 years. I haven't squatted more than 365. And even now, I, I rarely squat, maybe once a month. So it's mostly hack squats, leg presses. Uh, there's a lot of ways to stimulate the legs and make them grow without necessarily going super heavy. When I say that, I don't mean that the, you younger guys should not strive to get very strong on squats in the rep range of say 10 to 12, 10 to 15 reps and build on that over time because that is how I built my legs. I squatted heavy for many, many years. So you're not gonna see me squatting at all today. Don't be alarmed. No need to troll me. I, I squatted for more years than a lot of you guys have been alive. I did my fair share of 405, 495 for reps. Uh, my best was 725 for a double in my late 20s. So I did squat very heavy for a long, long time. Um, what I always do for legs and I recommend is a general warm up, some kind of cardio. Your treadmill, stationary bike, elliptical. At least five minutes, more like, I usually go somewhere between five and ten minutes. Uh, warm up as long as you need to. If you have like knee issues, you might want to warm up a little longer. There are no rules. Kai Green, some of the best legs ever. There were times when he would warm up as much as 30, 40 minutes on a step mill before he did legs, which is, that's, a, that's a little extreme, but I think you get to the point. Warm up as much as you need to but definitely do some sort of general cardio warm-up prior to your leg training. You wanna get the blood flowing, you wanna get the joints warm, more importantly, the connective tissues, your tendons and ligaments. You never wanna start a leg workout cold. And as you'll see, I gradually work up to heavier weights. Uh, when I was younger, I was very impatient. I would throw 225 on when I walked in the gym, do a few reps, cause I was in a hurry to get to the heavy weights, 315, few reps and then I always want to get right into the heavy stuff 405 or more and that those would be my work sets but a more intelligent way to do it would be three to four warm-up sets of all the compound movements leg press hat squat squat before you really load up the weight because you got to realize your muscles will grow and grow over time your connective tissues really don't they don't become that much stronger so you have to respect that if you want to be doing this any length of time and have any longevity. Like I said, I'm very grateful. I just have a little bit of knee pain now. For most of my training career, I had no knee pain at all. You know, thank God. Uh, lower back has always been an issue, so that's partly why I don't squat heavy anymore. But you'll see that I can get a great leg workout without squatting heavy. So as soon as I'm warmed up, we can get moving. So what I learned to do over the years was to train hamstrings first. Um, a lot of people will either train on a different day or they'll, the most common thing is guys will do all their quad movements, all their compound movements, then they do hamstrings. So when you do that, you're pretty exhausted by the time you get the hamstrings. You don't have the energy, you don't have the concentration anymore. So the hamstrings never really get, uh, you don't do your hamstrings justice. You need to prioritize them because most guys with good legs, you'll see, have good quads, but when they turn the side, the hamstrings are really flat. Uh, and probably at, at some point, it was about 15 years ago, I realized my hamstrings were really, really behind my quads. So what I did for a long, uh, I started doing hamstrings first while I was fresh. And I found that they, they started to grow and it didn't take away from my quad work at all. I was still able to do leg presses, hacks. So it's, it works this way. If you do quads first, it will take away from your hamstring training. But if you're hamstring training first, it doesn't really take away from your quad training. So I do recommend that everybody do this. You could do them on different days too. That's another way to do it is break it up into different days. So I like to start with hamstrings. So they have a, 
a cool new machine here I've never used. It's uh, an arsenal strength version and a standing leg curl. Start nice and light, full range of motion. Normally I like to do two types of leg curls. What do you want me to do? Louder. What? Louder. Oh. Normally I like to do both, both a standing or a seated leg curl in addition to a line leg curl because they emphasize different parts of the hamstring. This, you'll get a really good contraction as you would with a seated leg curl, but you're not gonna be able to get a full stretch because if you can see that, you really can't extend fully with these types. You can obviously with a lying leg curl, you get a full extension. So that's why I like to do them both in the same workout. I'll usually warm up and then do four work sets of each, sometimes with partials. Um, lying leg curls especially are good for partials because you can do full reps until you can't do any more full reps. And then you can just do reps from the stretch position because you'll find that you're still able to do a few more reps in the stretch position after you've failed at full range of motion. So on these, I'm really going slow and squeezing. You don't want to, you don't want to do these ballistically. You want to get a nice squeeze to trap the muscle. One cool thing about these standing uh, machines is you can just alternate back and forth with the legs. So you can do eight or ten reps with each leg. And by the time that's done, the other leg's rested. You go back to the other leg. Keep going. So you end up getting 15, 20, 25 reps for the first couple sets. You want to do a lot of reps and get some blood in there. You don't ever want to jump into heavy, low rep training with legs, as I said. Just not safe. I'm not going to talk all the time. <laughs> I didn't see, uh, do they have the other one over the other side? It's flip it inside, pump it out. Double. Oh boy, I'll have to figure that out first. I'll have to dipshit. So another thing I do with uh, some movements like leg curls, leg extensions, I like to hold the contraction. Just hold it for a few seconds when I'm all done doing reps. Just puts additional stress on the muscle, additional tension. You know, that's what it's all about. You're trying to really stress the muscle, make it do things it's not used to doing. And that's how you grow. I better do a set. I better figure it out before I, uh, first of all, I got like all the weight. Don't film yet. <laughs> I gotta make sure I don't look like a doofus. Nice 
Let's see how heavy this was. A few moments later. Okay, so uh, another thing I started doing a couple years ago was abductor work. Ab I'm sorry, adductor work. Started doing adductor work a few years ago for the inner thighs. Um, it's actually been a while now that I think about it. Because a lot of times you have good development in the outer quads, the middle, but your inner thighs, the adductors, the abductors don't have a lot of development. You could drive a truck through it. And you don't want that. You don't want a, whole, a lot of gap in there. And it does take uh, specific exercise. It does take the machine. You do get a lot of work for them by wide stance squats, leg presses, things like that. But I found you really have to specifically train the abductors with this machine, which you all have. Uh, it's not just for girls. Uh, if you want to have really complete thigh development, you need to you need to blow out your abductors. Have, have some good size there. So let me give this one a shot. Go a little wider. It's my Chuck Norris stretch. Okay. It's my first time using this particular one. So I'm not sure how heavy it is. Go all the way in. Probably set this next time so I can stretch out a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty light. Okay, ready? Here we go. Yep. What are you doing? Get out of my crotch. This one you can spot yourself. Force reps. I get a real slow negative. Ah, yeah. I do caution you guys to be careful with this machine. If you've never used it before, if you've never used the abductor machine, do not go crazy the first time. Don't go heavy. Don't go weight past failure or anything like that because you'll be so sore. You're going to feel like you tore your groin. And you're going to have trouble walking for days. It's happened to me. So... Take it easy with this when you're starting out. Gradually let yourself get stronger. Otherwise, you're going to be in a world of hurt, dude. It's going to feel like you literally tore your groin apart. But why is it important? This is what I'm talking about, this area. You want all that. You want that filled in. You don't want gaps. You don't want to be able to drive a truck through here. Okay? All right, moving on. Oh, uh, put the mic. Oh, oh yeah. He's been in tights. Yeah. Looks pretty complicated. Ah. So this is the first time I've tried this pendulum squat machine. I've, I've tried similar models years ago, but this one's really smooth. They had a contest here today for free memberships to see who could uh, do the most reps. Women had to do with no, no uh, additional weight on the apparatus. Men had to do 245 pound plates. So I'm gonna warm up and see how many reps I can do with two 45 pound plates. Probably gonna not beat the uh, the guy that won. He did 35 reps. Probably not gonna get that. I got sweating. Do. And you do need to do all kinds of rep ranges for legs. People say how many reps? How many reps should I do for legs? I built my legs uh, going as low as four to six reps, eight to ten reps, sometimes as high as 50 reps. All kinds of reps. There's no one rep range for legs that you should do. You should do a wide range because there's different types of muscle fibers and you need to train them all. Uh, if you just stick to low reps all the time, heavy weight, you're never going to get the leg development you were capable of. I know a lot of guys who can squat a shit ton of weight for a few reps and they don't have very big quads. It's because strength and size aren't exactly the same thing. You need to put the muscle under tension for a certain amount of time if you want it to respond and grow. So... Those, those low rep sets don't put the muscle under uh, tension for very long. You know, that's why, for legs, that's why, we all, that's why we do higher reps. Generally in the 10 to 20 range is, is where I'm sticking most of the time. All right, so let me try this one again. It's very smooth, very smooth. I'll take a wide stance. Another thing you'll notice, I always wear flat-soled shoes for leg training. 
You don't want to wear like Air Jordans or anything with a big uh, pocket of air in it or big, big heels. Uh, boots, I used to train in those uh, Magnum boots like Ronnie Coleman, Branch Warren did. Don't think that's a good idea. I think you're better off in flat sole shoes or even socks. You'll notice a lot of people squat and get left in socks now. You actually have much better stability in socks uh, or flat soles than you do with the heel. Uh, so I've got to warm up on this one. Trying out different positions. See which one feels right. Not bad, not bad. This was a competition they had today here for three free months. So on this machine, uh, they want to do, they want to find out who could do the most reps. For men, they had to use two 45 pound plates, which I have on there now, and a 260 pound beast named Meloton Cancino, it looks like. 35 reps. His girl, <laughs> yeah, it was a couple. Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, I don't know what they are, but they were a couple. Lori Reed, she hit 65 reps on this thing with no additional weight, but still, that's impressive. 65 reps on any kind of a compound movement with no stopping, and they weren't allowed to, they weren't allowed to rest. That's impressive. That takes a lot of wind, lung power, and that's where a lot of, that's where a lot of guys fail on legs if they don't have any, uh, any lung power, any stamina, because they don't do any cardio, and they never do high reps. So if you ever try to get them to do like a 20 rep set of squats, their lungs give out before their muscles do, and they just, they keel over. They can't do it, because they can't get enough oxygen in. So that's, that's another reason you want to keep the high reps in there at least part of the time. And don't neglect your cardio. Cardio is not going to hurt your leg training. Cardio is going to help your leg training. It's going to get you more conditioned, more athletic, better wind. All right, I've been stalling. I want to see what I can do on this. <laughs> I'm not trying to beat 35. Uh, I don't even have a target. I don't usually have a target in mind. I just want to go to failure. So if I can get 15 reps, if I can get 20, if I get 25, I get, whatever I get, if I'm putting out all effort, that was a good set. So here we go. Not have won the competition today, <laughs> but it felt pretty good. Beat me by two. Yeah. So I'm just gonna one more on this. Put a little bit more weight on. Do something like 10 to 12 reps. Typically, I don't do more than one compound movement anymore. Two at the most. Um, I don't see a need to do squats, leg press, hack squat, all in one workout. It's all the same motion. Uh, that being said. Doing squats first, and then moving on to something like a leg press, where you don't need to be balanced. 
you can just focus on pushing. It's, it's a good idea to do it that way. Especially when you're younger and you're doing heavier squats. They call this machine the humbler because you're looking at that and well, that doesn't look like much weight. Get in there and do it. <laughs> Different story. It's a lot heavier than it looks. Feels a lot heavier than it looks, I should say. Ugh. All right. Yeah, put your weights on. <laughs> so no idea how heavy this is going to feel. No idea. Could feel light, could feel heavy. <sighs> Somewhere in between. <laughs> so. I want to try this. <laughs> Let's try this first. Let's see how you get this off. What's this one? Somebody, somebody tall with them. <laughs> Very smooth, very smooth machine. So I'm aborting the leg press in favor of this because it just feels better today. Okay. So I'm probably gonna put my belt on. I'm gonna hear it from you guys, I know, but listen. My lower back's been messed up since 1987. There's been times when I couldn't even tie my own shoes, put my own shoes and socks on for like weeks at a time. Uh, had to go to the chiropractor, you know, multiple times every week for weeks and weeks. Um, and also, you know, 50 years old. Talk to me when you're 50. A lot of you guys, you won't be lifting when you're 50. You'll be a couch potato by then. <laughs> Talking about how you used to be in shape, you used to work out, you used to have muscles. If you do it right, yeah, like you, but if you have a passion for it, you can do this for your whole life. You probably won't be able to lift the same heavy weights, obviously. Father Time will beat you all. That's what he does. So you're not going to be as strong as you were. At, se at 75 years old, you're not going to be as strong as you were at 25. It's just, that's biology. We're, uh, we're organisms. We age. And this does, all this will take a toll on your joints, your tendons. But, you know, there's always ways to keep going. I'm, I'm still going. 
I do not train as heavy as I used to. But I've been able to maintain all my leg size. I haven't lost anything. Even though my weights are now nothing like they used to be. I'm not squatting four, five, six hundred pounds anymore. It's not gonna happen. It doesn't need to happen. All right, so this is really just to make my waist look smaller. I don't know if it's working or not. <laughs> Here we go. That was going to be worse. By the way, this used to be my website for about 15 years until I gave up. I gave up the domain name Ron Harris Muscle. If you go there now, they're selling steroids and it looks to me like uh, the Indonesian or Thai language I don't really know what language it is but I see some people that look like they're either Indonesian or Thai in the picture so it's one of those countries I guess I should be flattered they chose my website to take that domain and sell steroids out of it no I have not tried to order personally I think if you order steroids through the mail especially from out of this country into the USA you're just, you're just begging to get in trouble. You're begging. Like, please, please come arrest me. So I did lie. Sometimes I will stop even on these, even if I know I have another rep, if I know I want to go heavier. And I know I want to go a little heavier, so I'm saving that little bit. So I'm just going to do one more set, that set, as many reps as I can get, it doesn't matter. Six, eight, 10, 12, whatever it gets, that's the set. Okay. So, like I said, all makes and models of hacks and leg presses are different. Four plates on one is going to be a lot heavier or lighter. Probably the lightest hack squat that I can recall using over the years. It's made by Flex Equipment out of California. They don't make, they haven't made equipment for years, but there's still a lot of those pieces out there. I used to load that sucker up with seven, eight, even nine plates at times. If I did nine, it was only for like five or six reps, but the point is, um, they're not, they're not, you can't compare one make and model of a leg presser hack to another, because they're all different. Different leverages, different friction. You know, if you find one that feels good for you, gives you a good feeling in the muscle, doesn't hurt the joints, that's yours. Don't worry about using one plate or 10 plates. However, my, however much weight it takes to get the job done for you, that's it. So you, when you hear people say I use X amount or whatever, don't worry. It doesn't matter what anybody else uses. Find what you, you, what you need to grow, to get a full range of motion. Stick with that. I'm stalling again. One eternity later. Let's go.
I stopped at really weird number nine. I don't care. <laughs> So for hamstrings, I typically do some type of a stiff leg deadlift. It's actually Romanian deadlift. The distinction is stiff leg, you keep the knees completely locked. Romanian deadlift, there's a slight bend. You always want to keep a little arch in your back. You never want to round your back. You see a lot of people doing that. You're going to destroy your lower back that way, guys. Keep it tight, keep an arch. The way I describe the form on this is as if you're bowing down to somebody. You want to keep your head up, keep your eyes in the mirror. Pretend it's like a martial arts thing. You're about to fight somebody, you're bowing to them. But they might be an asshole and kick you when your head's down if you're not looking. So that's why you got to keep your eye on that guy. I'm going to take off my wedding band so it doesn't get all scratched up. It's not like I'm trying to pretend I'm not married, guys. I'm well aware that I'm married. So, I'll put it with the other bling. <laughs> Here we go. You don't want to go all the way up and lock out because that's a resting position. You want to keep the tension on. So you notice I don't go all the way up. Stretch is the most important part. I wonder why why is he doing leg extensions last? Aren't you supposed to do leg extensions first? That's how I did it for many years. And I used to stack out, stack these things out, pin extra 45s on. And eventually I started having knee pain. You know, for a long time I didn't realize this was what was causing the knee pain. I thought it was the squats or leg presses or hacks or whatever, but um, quadriceps, they're meant to go heavy in a compound movement where you're bending the whole leg, squat, leg press, hat squat. Single joint movement, the leg extension. Your knee patella, this tendon, it's not designed to, to carry very, very heavy loads. It's not meant to do that. So I'd rather do it, if you're doing the beginning of the workout, I would do higher reps, 20, 20 to 30 rep sets. Um, you can go a little heavier later in the workout like I'm doing it now, but even so, there's no need to go crazy heavy on this. If you're gonna load up weight, do it on the leg press, do it on the squat, do it on the hack squat. Leg extension is not meant to be hundreds and hundreds of pounds resistance, um, especially in that bottom stretch position. In fact, I, I won't even go into a full stretch because of my knees. I'll stop short. You'll see I'm doing probably what looks like a three quarter range of motion. The most important part of the leg extension as far as I'm concerned is that contraction. Full contraction muscle top, and that I always get. I exaggerate that, as you'll see.
This is a very, very heavy stack. Very heavy. For me, I like to keep the reps usually between 12 and 20. For me, that's a sweet spot. If you're using a weight you can only get eight to 10 reps with, it's too heavy. It's too heavy a load for, your, for a single joint movement like the leg extension. If you can't get 12, 15 good reps with it, just take some weight off. You know, we're trying to build the muscle, we're trying to stay in this for the long haul. So you don't want to get hurt. You want to stress the muscle, not the tendons and the ligaments. Give yourself arthritis either. You don't want that. Trust me, you got that. So let's do one more set of these. One more thing with leg extensions. Jay, Jay Cutler pointed this out to me. I never really thought about it. You want to look for versions that have two pads instead of just one bar that goes across. Because what inevitably happens with the kind with the bar is it gets bent. So the angle is going to be off. One leg is going to be pushing at a different angle than the other eventually. That won't happen with this type. We have the two bars separated like that on either side of the uh, movement arm. Yeah. Start with the quads, sit back on the heel. Hold that for a few seconds. And come forward. Let the, let the back leg trail behind me, push up. Stretch is this. This upper thigh near the hip. Come down. This is more of a hip, hip and lower back, a glute stretch. Okay. Come down for the hamstrings. Okay, just reverse it for the other leg. So starting here with a quad. Sit back on that. Same thing, come forward. Stretching it right here. <coughs> Down again. Now I do the glutes, one at a time. Sitting on your foot, basically, getting your whole foot under you. Flip your, come down like that so you feel stretch and hold it. Other side. And I come back. I'm not very flexible here, so I'm sure there's a lot of you guys are going to get better range of motion. So I go over with one leg as far as I can. 
This is really cracking the low back. Switch sides. See, I can't get as far. Gonna go over with the leg. Try to go as far as I can here. This one hurts. This is the hips. Opens it, trying to open up the hips. Again, you stretching experts out there, you'll probably have notes for me, I'm sure. There are ways I could be doing this better. This is my little routine. I've been doing it for a few years. So that's, that's a little taste of what I do for legs. The workout's never gonna be exactly the same. Um, Today wasn't really a great example because typically I will do more work sets. Um, I like to train in my own environment, my own gym, on my own schedule when I've had X amount of sleep, X amount of meals. Um, anyway, big legs, if you want big legs, you have to train them hard, but you have to train them smart. Nobody ever got huge legs by accident. There are people that have big arms by accident. It just was a byproduct of heavy chest and back training, shoulder training. Um, anybody you see with really big legs, even if they had good genetics for them, they had to put the work in. Branch Warren, Tom Platts, these people, Kai Green, they all put a lot of very hard work into their legs. That's why their legs look the way they do. Uh, if you want to be in, in this for the long haul, be smart, full range of motion, plenty of warm-ups, stretch. Don't go too low on the reps very often at all. Um, that's it. you got to be patient. Nobody built huge legs overnight. It's going to take a little time, just like a big back. Some things come quicker than others. Legs are always going to take you a little longer. But you know what? It's well worth the wait because tons of guys have pretty good mass in the upper body and these little chicken legs. And it's not a good look, uh, especially if you consider yourself a bodybuilder. You want to have a balanced physique, top to bottom, front to back, left to right. Everything should be complete, balanced, and in proportion. So. Work your legs just as hard as your upper body. It does pay off. Because once you got big wheels, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.